Hello or konnichiwa to all my friends. I am so excited that we are going to be exploring Japan today and konnichiwa is how they say hello. So let's go and learn about Japan together. Hi, I'm Robbie. Hi, I'm Susie. Hi, I'm Miss Carly, the teacher. It's time for Home Time, time. with Robbie and Susie. I have hands. I have hands. Watch me clap. Watch me clap. Oh, oh what a miracle am I. I have feet. I have feet. Watch me stand. Watch me stand. Oh, Watch me swing. Watch me swing. Oh, what a miracle am I? I have legs. I have legs. They can bend and stretch. They can bend and stretch. Oh, what a miracle am I? Oh, what a miracle. Oh, So very special, there's nobody quite like me. I have a spine, I have a spine, it can twist and bend, it can twist and bend. Oh, what a miracle am I! I have a one foot, I have a one foot, watch me balance. I am so excited to explore Asia with you this week. Did you know Asia is the biggest continent in the world? It's made up of 48 countries. And as you can see, this is all of Asia here, the red part. If we turn it over, we can actually see all the countries in Asia. We can see that China is the biggest and then Russia, remember Russia was a part of Europe as well. And it travels all the way out over the page, but comes all the way across over here to Asia. And down here, this is Indonesia. It's made up of over 17,000 islands. How phenomenal is that? The countries up here are very cold because they're close to the North Pole or the Arctic Circle. And then as you come all the way down here, they're tropical, so they are very hot. Over here in Nepal, the biggest mountain in the world is there. It's called Mount Everest. And then all the way over here is the lowest part in the world. And it's a sea that is so full of salt that you float all the time. How amazing is that? In Asia, there's lots of different cultures and they have lots of different traditions. They have amazing musical instruments. I have some here. We have this one's been made from a coconut shell and it makes a beautiful noise. We have some bells here. These look like these are from India and they have a bright green thread. And we have some shakers, which are from Indonesia. Can you see the beautiful patterns on them? They have very vibrant colors and they're made of wood. They have seeds inside them, which make that beautiful sound. 
In Asia, there are some amazing and unique animals. I have some here. So they have the Asian elephant, which is the smallest elephant. So we learnt about the African elephant. These elephants have smaller ears. And then there's the orangutan. They are very, very special because they only live in certain parts of Asia. They have beautiful red fur. Then we have the Komodo dragon. It's one of the largest, if not the biggest lizard in the world. And they live in an island called Komodo Island in Indonesia. Then we have the dugong. They are a beautiful sea creature that love to eat seagrass. And this one here, have you seen this one before? That's a panda. They're from China. They eat lots of yummy, crunchy bamboo. And then this one here, that is a tiger. And they live in the jungles of Asia. How amazing are these beautiful, colorful, vibrant animals? I'm really excited to learn more about Asia this week. Would you like to come and join us? So excited to be exploring Asia with you this week and I get to look at Japan with you and I actually have Japan's flag. It is a big white rectangle with a red disc in the middle and this is the flag that they use and do you know what? It actually symbolizes the rising sun. Isn't that exciting? I love learning new things about flags but what I'm really excited about is learning some Japanese with you. Because do you know what? I've learned a little bit of Japanese as well. Would you like to learn how to count with me? All right, let's get ready. So I've actually brought my special Japanese folder with me to help us. And I've also put the numbers at the top to help you. Let's try and count them together. But let's start with English first so we can learn our numbers. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We just counted to ten in English. But let's give it a go in Japanese. It's a little bit trickier. Maybe you can join in on the next time. Ready? Ichi, ni, san, she, go, roku, shichi, hachi, ku, ju. We just counted to 10. Maybe we can try it again, but maybe we can use our fingers this time. Are you ready? Get your fingers. Ichi, ni, san, shi, go, roku, shichi, Hachi, ku, ju. How easy was that? And now you know how to count in Japanese too. Maybe you could practice at home, or maybe you could just practice to five. Ichi, ni, san, shi, go. I love learning new languages, and Japanese was one of my favorites, and I loved learning all the numbers. I hope you've had fun too. Let's see what else we're gonna learn about Japan today. Hello everyone, I am excited to continue to explore Japan with you and today I have a Japanese folktale story called the talkative tortoise. So you can see here the tortoise here and he's talking. So turtles don't usually talk but as this is a folktale it's not real but it's a really good story. Okay, so let's begin. One day, Tortoise crawled to the edge of the lake to have a wash, a drink and a chat. At the water's edge, he met his two best friends, a pair of geese. Tortoise was lucky because geese are known to be extremely good listeners and tortoise could talk like nobody's business. I think that means he likes to talk a lot. Do you think it's easy to keep my shell as shiny and smooth as this? He asked as he waded into the lake. Of 
Of course not, one of the geese replied. I have to wash my shell all over with the finest lake water and then shine it with the softest moss I can find, said Tortoise, splashing about in the cool water. The geese nodded their heads and gave a little quack or two. They'd heard the story a hundred times. You see the tortoise's very shiny shell. One day, as the first snow fell on the far mountains, the geese decided it was time to fly south. It will be winter soon, said one. We need to fly to our feeding grounds. You see they're all flying off. Tortoise began to cry. But you can't leave me behind. I'll be so lonely. Who will I talk to? Who will I play with? And who will look after me, he wailed. Sorry, said the other goose. Yak and sheep will keep you company, but we have to leave. Tortoise had a huge tantrum. He sobbed, he sighed. Oh, 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 it's not fair. Can't I come too? But you can't fly, said one of the geese. Carry me, carry me, replied the tortoise. We can't carry you. Your shell is too smooth. It would slip out of our beaks, said the other goose. Please, please, pretty please, begged Tortoise as the tears rolled down his scaly cheeks. The geese discussed the problem and soon came up with the solution. One of them waddled off into a bush and came back dragging a long, sturdy stick. What do you think they're gonna do? We will lift both ends and you must bite on the middle with your strong jaw, said the first goose. And hold on tight, said the second, which means, they both warned, you mustn't talk the whole time we are flying. Tortoise smiled. His two best friends had come to the rescue. Oh, that's easy. I can stay quiet for a few seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, seasons, years. We get the point, Tortoise, said the first goose. You'd better do as we say, warned the second goose. Do you think you can stay quiet? The very next morning, the wind was light and the sky was as clear as crystal. The two geese clamped each end of the stick in their beaks and asked Tortoise to hold on. He crawled up to the middle of the stick, opened his mouth as wide as he could and bit down hard. The geese flapped their wings, struggling with the extra weight, but within seconds they were rising into the air. Tortoise was true to his word, keeping his mouth firmly shut and closing his eyes in terror. Oh, he's got his eyes shut like this. When he finally opened his eyes, Tortoise saw that the geese had flown high above the lake and the plain. He was fascinated. He could see sheep, goats, yurts and people. He wanted to tell his good friends all about it but remembered to stay quiet just in time. They flew over rolling plains dotted with villages, rivers filled with houseboats and boats carrying vegetables to the market. Soon the air grew cold as they climbed towards the mountains. Tortoise was desperate to tell his good friends all about it, but he remembered to stay quiet just in time. What do you think will happen if he talks, if he's biting on the stick? They soared over the mountain tops and down into Japan. Soon they left the snow behind and there was lush green forests below. In time, his friends flew over a village. People looked up and shouted, look, two geese carrying a tortoise. Tortoise was annoyed. He wanted to say to the geese, they should mind their own business. But he managed just in time to remember his promise to keep his lips zipped tight. 
Tortoise loved the feeling of flying. The wind brushed his shell, giving it even more of a polish, while his eyes feasted on the wonderful sights and sounds of the miniature world below. There was so much he wanted to tell the geese, but it would have to wait until they landed. As the sun began to set, they flew over a town. The people there looked up and laughed. Amazing! Have you ever seen anything so funny? It's a flying tortoise. Tortoise was so angry. The people should have been impressed by how clever he was to hitch a ride with his two best friends. His lips twitched, his teeth clattered together and his tongue began to dance inside his mouth. Uh oh, what's going to happen? As the town people far below burst into giggles, their laughter spread like ripples across a pond. Tortoise could hold back no longer. Oh, do be quiet, you silly bunch of fools. Oops. Tortoise realized his mistake too late. He'd opened his mouth. He didn't even have time to say goodbye to his friends. Instead, he fell like a big shiny stone straight down to the ground. Uh oh. Tortoise landed with a huge bump, bounced twice and rolled over rocks and soil until finally he came to a rest. His once smooth and shiny shell was now cracked and rough all over as it is to this day. Because here, he had a smooth shell and after he landed, it got all cracked and bumped and rough, just like the tortoises are today. Look at him falling over. So if you ever try talking to a tortoise, he won't give you an answer. No way. He's finally learned his lesson. Now he knows, as we all should, when to keep his mouth shut. There's a tortoise there. Looks like a tortoise today that we see. That was a good story. I really liked that. Did you like that? Well, I have a story about a turtle, which is similar to a tortoise. Okay, would you like to sing it with me? They have a big shell and they have legs and they have a head and it's a little bit like that. Okay, are you ready? It goes like this. I'm a little turtle with a shell. I have four legs, a head and a tail. When I get so scared I want to hide, I put my head and legs inside. So when turtles get scared, they pull their head in and they pull their legs and their arms into their shell to hide. So they kind of look like a big rock. Should we sing that song again? Okay, you ready? I'm a little turtle with a shell. I have four legs, a head and a tail. When I get so scared, I want to hide. I put my head and legs inside. I like that song. Did you enjoy that? You can keep singing that one at home. Okay, we're going to continue to explore Japan and all the beauty of Japan. So let's go and see what we're going to do next. Hi everyone. Thanks Stacey, that was such an amazing story. I'm so excited to continue to explore Japan. No, I am too and I am so excited to see what we are doing with all these interesting things on the table. Well, in Japan there is a beautiful tree called a cherry blossom and they are famous for it. So I thought we could create our own. Oh, I would love to create one. So this here is a cherry blossom here. As you can see, it's very pink and I have some pink paint and we have some pink paper. And Stacy here, I've given you a stick. 
So you're going to get to create a really fun cherry blossom. I'm excited. Uh, and I'm going to be using paint to create a cherry blossom. Ooh. So a cherry blossom, is that just a sort of like a type of flower? Yes, it is. It's a beautiful pink flower and it comes out once a year in Japan. And there's a festival, so people come from all over the world to look for it. Oh, wow. That seems very special. I'm excited now. So you can create your own cherry blossom at home. We're going to create two different types. I thought I would use some paint and you can just get a recycled bottle, but we're going to be using the bottom of the bottle to make the flower. Oh. And I thought for you, if you could, you would like to create a decorative cherry blossom. So you get to use your fingers and you get to tear up some pink paper and roll it into little balls and you get to place them all over your stick to create a cherry blossom just oh, like this. Yeah. So I get to make my own real one. Oh, you I'm do. Excited. So you have some glue there and I you do. can be as creative as you like. You can put your cherry, you can put as many flowers as you'd like on there. Oh wow, this is exciting. Mm -hmm. Well I might start ripping a little bit of paper while you start drawing your one. Okay, so I am going to be using the paint here, but first I need a branch to put my flowers on, my cherry blossoms on. So I have a piece of paper here and I have a brown texture because the branches are brown. So I'm going to start by drawing a branch just like this and then there's going to be some smaller branches off it just like that. And you can use paint or you can use a pencil. I'm using a texture but you can also create cherry blossoms in other different ways. You can maybe use Play-Doh and then you can roll your pink paper and create flowers on that. So there's lots of ways that you can create a cherry blossom. But this is a really fun way and you get to recycle. So I've got my recycled bottle and I put paint just on the bottom because there's one, two, three, four, five. And it kind of looks like a flower. That's what I was about to say. It's such a good idea using the bottle because it does have that flower shape to it. Oh, I wonder what it's going to look like. Let's see. Oh. And look, there is my flower cherry blossom. So I've done one now. So I'm going to choose to do a few more because there is so many on this tree. I think I'm going to put a few more flowers on my picture. Definitely. And I love that it's just leaving like the petals behind and it's leaving a beautiful pattern just like in the picture. That that pink and that light white colour. Very good. And how are you going with yours? I am good. Why you've been doing that? I've been scrunch I've been ripping and scrunching up some little tiny bits of paper. But I've also been doing like little twists and making little twists to make them look like maybe like little bows. Ooh. I love it, it can be so fun with this. And I love ripping the paper, oh, it makes a fun noise. Mm -hmm. And I've been twisting them all different because no flower looks the same. That's right. And I want my cherry blossom tree to look unique. I love that. And the same with the flowers that I'm painting. They all look different. You can see some have a bit more paint, some don't. Some have petals that are joined together and it's really fun to explore because you, I love being creative. Oh, I do. I, I love finding ways to be creative too and I love all the flowers that you've been putting on there. Can I count them? You sure can. But can I, I've been teaching my friends some Japanese. Can I teach, the, teach you how to do it in Japanese yes, too? Yes, please. So ready, we're gonna start to the bottom and work our way up so we go Ichi, ni, san, shi, go, roku. Ooh, so that's exciting. So let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can I try in, if I can remember in Japanese? I'll help you, don't worry. Ichi, ni, san, shi, go. go. Roku! Wow, thanks Stacy. Ichi Nisan. Three. Wow, thank you so much for teaching me some Japanese. That's okay. Oh, and now I've started. Oh, I've got my big stick here. I don't want to poke anyone in the eye. And do you know what? I've got my glue here. 
So I'm gonna start dipping some of my whoop, flowers in and sticking them on my tree. Oh, it's a little bit cold and a little bit sticky and messy doing this. Wow. Oh. I, I can't wait to see what your cherry blossom tree is going to look like. It is. It's very pretty. And you can put as many as you want. I love all the different shades of pink that you've got because the same in the cherry blossom tree, there's different types. There's lights and darks and different shades of pink. It is. Oh, maybe I could count my ones. Oh, itchy. <laughs> Oh, and do you know what? I reckon that in maybe making this at home or maybe even in Japan, I reckon the butterflies would love the cherry blossoms. Oh, I agree because butterflies love flowers and with how many they are. I know. And do you know what they call a butterfly in Japanese? No, what do they call a butterfly? They call a butterfly a chocho. A chocho. So a butterfly is called a chocho. Wow, that's really interesting. There must be definitely lots of chochos near the cherry blossoms. There sure would be. Oh, my hands are getting very sticky. <laughs> it's a messy craft, but I love messy crafts. I do too. And do you know what? This would be so beautiful that when you made it, you could even put this in a vase or maybe you could hang it somewhere in your house. That sounds like a great idea. Maybe stick a couple more on go one more we'll put this one here so do you know what you could put lots more on but I'm just gonna put these ones on for now because I think I might need to wash my sticky hands so that I can twist and I can crumple up more but there are lots of beautiful cherry blossoms on mine that looks so beautiful Stacy it looks like our cherry blossoms in the picture here it does it does and oh I love your one that's my finished cherry blossom tree beautiful thank fun you experience it was lots of fun you can create your own cherry blossom at home and we'd love to see it so please share with us but we can't wait to see you next time so we'll talk to you later bye, bye.